not too heavy over lunch uh, because usually in the afternoon session uh, i tend to get a little bit sleepy in the afternoon okay um okay uh, this afternoon session uh, we, is going to be a little bit more of a hands on um hands on uh, uh activities that we are going to do it together okay um so we are moving into a hybrid era where uh, there is a challenge to have uh, class activities uh, have activities in the class as well as um, online so there must be a delicate balancing act between uh, students in the class as well as online and also some of the challenges uh, for us educators is that uh, what a sort of uh, applications or what sort of techniques or ways that we can use um, to increase student engagement, to increase um, student interactivity in the class. So this afternoon, we are going to explore um, some of these activities that um, you can use in your classroom to, you know, to increase the inter interactivity and to increase the, the engagement of your students in the class. Okay, so uh, this afternoon, we're going to dedicate towards um, how are we going to teach uh, creatively um, using uh, Microsoft Teams? Okay, and there are many applications that I will share with you um, as part of this afternoon. First of all, um, just to ask around all our educators here, does anyone have a particular struggle or problem in terms of student engagement in your class? Any of you are encountering that, that problem? That means uh, your students are not students are quite passive in the class and um, it sometimes it's a struggle to engage your students in the class anyone having this uh, situation in your class no uh, everyone's uh, classroom is okay anyone having this situation maybe you like to share yeah okay so see how says yeah no response from students yeah okay how about the rest any any difficulties do you all face in your classroom <laughs> so payment says students say 8 a.m class is too early yeah uh yeah la, sometimes students being students la, but but my response to that is better you they they got two or three years, two or three years to get prepared to wake up at 8 a.m. because they are going to start working at 8 a.m. in the future. Uh, so it's better for them to start practicing now on, on waking up. <laughs> that will be my response. Lah, okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's look at some of the applications lah, that, that we can uh, use for our teaching. The first one is, um, okay, let me, let me get the slides. Okay. The first one is called uh, Wheel of names uh, wheel of names okay uh, so this is something that uh, we can experiment and you can see how it works uh. so Nordini says yeah students ask for more interactive session wonderful so uh, this afternoon session we will see how we can increase um, student interaction in the classroom so the first one I will um, <coughs> share with you is uh, this called um, student engagement uh, sorry, uh, Wheel of Names. So let me share the link here in the uh, chat for you. Okay, so when you click this link, so this is in the chat. Huh? So when you click this link, uh, <clears throat> you are able to see a, a link that looks something like this. Okay, the way is empty, the wheels is empty. So here you have to enter in your uh, student's name. So let me put, for example, I'm going to put Doni. Okay, I'm going to put Anis and then I'm going to put maybe um, Kian Ting. Okay, then I'm going to put uh, Wei Jian. Then I'm going to put Yi Fang. Okay, I'm going to put Wen Fen. Okay, I'm going to put Noel. Okay, I'm going to put Diana. Uh, Hui Fen. Okay, uh, who else do I have here? Okay, payment. Okay, Dini. Right? So, I have about 11 names here. 11 names here. So, 
what's so interesting about this application is when you use this application, um, it's a spin. It's a spin of the wheel and it's very colorful. Um, so what happens if you spin the wheel? So I'm going to just click this. And you see there's a background noise. Huh? There's a background sound uh, of the wheel spinning. Okay. And then you're going to get a winner. Okay, a winner, that means, uh, for example, one fun. Right, so one fun's name comes out. Now, when this happens, you have that option to even remove. Right? You can remove the name so the name doesn't get repeated. Uh, this is a very nice and uh, good application, especially for Q&A, question and answer. So if you want to make a Q&A random in your class, uh, you want to make it random so that some students sometimes uh, when we just randomly call their name like this, they feel that we are targeting them, you know. Uh, they feel that uh, maybe this lecturer doesn't like me, that's why he's calling my name. And sometimes we accidentally call the same students twice. And sometimes that can cause a bit of uh, uh, tension because the student thinks that uh, maybe something the student has done wrong and you're trying to find uh, fault. You're trying to focus on the students, you see. So these are all unnecessary distraction. So when you use application like this, it's very random and it gets the excitement up. You know, it, it makes people excited because uh, you have an application here and it's random. There's nice sound effect. So in case you want to do any Q&A or you want to do any simple random uh, uh, activity, you can use this application. So you have the sound effect, right? So this is 11, 11 students, 11 students, right? So what do I do is you can see that the chances of calling, uh, the chances of the person uh, being called is quite low because the pie is very big. Uh, the pizza pie, I don't know what you call this, but the, the size of the pie is quite big. Uh, you want to make it smaller. So what do I do in my class is I copy this name. Okay, and then I paste it. <clears throat> and you notice what happens. The pie becomes smaller and I copy another round and paste it. <clears throat> the pie becomes smaller. I copy and another round, I paste it. The pie becomes even smaller. So what happens is, you have one name appearing at least four times because you have copied four times and the chances of you getting called now is very high because the pie is much smaller. So now if you do, for example, I do a, a round, uh, it makes it more exciting because you have a lot of colors here. And on top of that, the chances of you uh, being called is quite high. So you see like, for example, Yi Fang and I can remove so one time if Yifang's name is called, I can remove all her name at one time. Or if you want to remove only one time, you can remove one. That means Yifang has a chance to be called again in the future, right? Or you want to remove her name entirely, you can remove. So this is what we call Wheel of Names. So this application is free. Uh, all the applications that I've showed you this afternoon is all free. Uh, so you can use it as part of your classroom. Okay, any questions on this application? Okay, is it okay? You all can follow? Because I'm not sure whether all are back or so in the first place. I think there are 17 online. Okay, Hidayah, yeah, I, I can see Noor. There's a thumbs up there. The rest of you, can you follow this? Okay, Yifang, yes. Okay, good. So there is a thumbs up. All right. Now, let's look at the next application. The next application is called uh magic hat magic hat uh, so the magic hat is another very nice and interesting application let me share the link to you okay so this is the magic hat link okay so now oh this is appears very big huh? so i think maybe the url is very big so if you click the the link okay you are going to go uh to the magic hat ah uh, so you see the magic hat is loaded okay now you have the magic hat here now what is this magic hat here you have the gear icon right so you can click the gear and inside here, you can put all your students' name inside here. So I'm going to clear list, okay? And I am going to take the names 
uh, that I entered in earlier here and I'm going to transfer to my magic hat. So here you can see all the names of your students is now here in the magic hat. All right. So now I am going to click start name picker. Okay. So now what happens? Now when you click on the hat, ah, you see lucky my name got speak first, right? So you can see that there is an effect, there's a sound effect and the name, the, the head will randomly uh, pick the names for you, right? So this is another very useful application uh, for you to do another type of activity. You have any other activities that requires random name calling or any other uh, activities, uh, for example, like presentation, like student presentation. So instead of asking, okay, who is going to present next, who's going to present next and all this, who wants to present next, you can use this application, which is very random. Okay. And even you can use it for even for Q&A. So apart from Wheel of Names, you can even use this as a uh, application for uh, Q&A and you can remove the name. Uh, you can remove the name. But one thing good about this magic hat as compared to um, the wheel of names earlier, this one, you can put in numbers. So you can put in numbers here. So you can put maybe numbers one to five. Okay, then you put start number picker. Now, what is the difference between is is, okay, when you click this, it picks a number. It picks a number for you. So now, this is very useful if you are doing group presentations. Okay, so if let's say, for example, you have group one to group five. So which group gets uh, present first? So usually uh, the poor group number one will always be called or the last group will always be called. That is usually the case. Lah, huh? uh, and sometimes randomly the middle group, uh, group number three gets called randomly. And then sometimes we even miss say, okay, which group already present? Huh? Can't remember, forget already. Okay, so this random ha uh, magic hat helps you to uh, navigate your way or which group to present first and so it makes it a bit exciting like you know so the students say okay which group is going to be picked first then you can remove the number so once you remove the number it doesn't appear again all right so this is the uh, magic hat application okay are you all okay with this one any questions on this so far No, uh, okay, so payment, okay, there's a thumbs up. Okay, the rest is okay, yeah. So you can experiment on this, uh, you can use the, the magic hat and try this, yeah. Okay, next one I'm going to show you is uh, what we call um, random team generator. Random team generator. Okay, now this application is a very, very useful and also a very interesting application so i'm going to share the link to you in the chat okay now if you click this uh, random team generator okay now i am going to go down okay in this random team generator you go down you see this box here this is the box where you copy and uh, and paste all your students name here so, for example, um, I have all the names here. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste all my students name here, right? Now, random team generator helps you to break your students into groups. So this is something that is very useful because usually for online classes, uh, the students, they do not know each other, except for second semester, third semester students, they already know each other. But for the first semester, they have not uh, met each other on campus. So the, the ice breaking is not there. So they're not really uh, sure about who to partner, who to be in the group. So this is where we need to facilitate that uh, online group discussions and all this and break them into group. So uh, sometimes it can be very challenging for us uh, because uh, we tell them, okay, go and pick your own group, divide yourself in your own group and usually uh, it's not very successful because it's going to be a great struggle, especially for first semester students. And sometimes second semester students onwards, they already have their own cliques. They have their own gang, you know, and sometimes you want them to partner with other people. But sometimes, you know, for you to think who to match, match and all this, uh, it's going to take a lot of time. So 
what you can do is you can paste all your students name inside here all right and then here you can set how many groups you want how many groups you want let's see if i want four groups huh? four groups so i just click rerun and what is going to happen is this application is going to divide your class students according to groups automatically so you have for example group one okay these are the group members group two these are the group members group three these are the group members group four this is the group members so if you want to change you don't want four groups maybe i'm going to only have three groups you can click rerun and you can see that it's more or less a balanced number now so group one this will be the members group two this will be the members and group three this will be the members and you can tell okay those who are the first name are uh, the first name will be the group leader for example so if you want to do any group presentation or you want to do any group activities or group tasks this will be a very interesting application to quickly help you to break into groups so you can just put all the names inside here and then you can click run uh, put how many groups you want click run and then you can immediately share to your students okay this is your group okay so now uh, you can start doing the task and then give them amount of time and come back and see which group is going to present first so you can even use this to complement with the random magic hat so let's say you want to start a presentation you can do this then you're on the magic hat and you can set uh, the numbers for this and which group starts to present first okay so this is a very useful application to help you to um, organize your students into groups so it's very random uh, so the computer decides uh, so the, the students also cannot say oh, yeah this lecturer always uh, put me with this person you know so this uh, is a random team generator where it's, it's randomized so it's uh, chances is very very high that you might get uh, random people okay any questions on this application random team generator no questions ah huh? okay can follow ah huh, so far okay so this is on random team generator all right okay yeah all right let's go to the next one now the next one is called uh jamboard okay jamboard so this is actually google jamboard google jamboard now <clears throat> google jamboard allows you to share and collaborate up to 50 students at once so you can write you can draw you can insert text you can insert picture you can insert sticky notes you can uh, draw shapes and also uh, google jamboard you have a nice laser pointer that is very useful for teaching so basically google jamboard is a digital whiteboard it's a digital whiteboard Okay, so let's explore this uh, Google Jamboard together, yeah? All right, so let me let me just uh, go to Google Jamboard now. Okay, just a moment, let me sign in, uh. Okay, oops, sorry, let me share the screen. Okay, so to sign in, uh, to go to Google Jamboard, you have to go to your Google application first. Right, so sign in to your Google Mail. Even our UM Mail has um, Google Jamboard. Huh? So you, you can enter in your password. Okay, so you will be signing in into the Google uh, uh, Google account now. So click the grid here. This is the Google Apps grid. And you scroll to Google Jamboard. Google Jamboard. So you will see it here. Google Jamboard. So those of you who are used to Google Classroom and Meet, you also have all these applications here. So this is Google Jamboard. So click Google Jamboard. Okay, so now uh, here, if you have used Google Jamboard, you will have a lot of uh, applications before. If you have not used it, then it's going to be more or less blank like this. So you're going to click uh, plus sign. Click the plus sign here. And now you are into the Google Jamboard. So you see Google Jamboard, it looks like an A4 paper. It looks like a plain A4 paper in horizontal landscape, horizontal landscape. So now you have a plain background here. You can even set the background. So if I click here, set background, I can even put a polka dot. 
Uh, so you see there's some tiny polka dot uh, background here. Now you can even set uh, lines. Um, you can even set uh, uh, boxes here, grid like that. And you can even, even change it to just blue color. You can even change it to just black color. Or if you have an image, uh, you have a picture and image in your desktop, uh, in your computer, and you like to upload here, you can also do that. Right, so now I'm just going to maintain this as a polka dot, uh, uh, polka dot circle color like this. Okay, so now what can we do with Google Jamboard? Here you have on your left, all these are tools. All these are tools that you can use for your Google Jamboard. So I'm going to use the text function first. I'm going to put a title for my Google Jamboard. So you can see here, there is a text box. So you click the text box and I'm going to just type it here randomly. And I'm going to call my title on my Jamboard Challenges of Online Teaching. Okay. Challenges in Online Teaching. Okay. So now you see I have my title here, Challenges in Online Teaching. So now um, you see the title is a bit small. You can click the box. You can put your mouse at the edge and you can even adjust it to make it really big and you can even drag it uh, from left to right to make it really big so like this so you have challenges in online teaching for example okay so now you can even um, edit like if you want to edit you want to edit otherwise you can just leave it so challenges in online teaching like this okay now what i'm going to do is i want to put an image i want to put an image into this so to talk about what is some of the challenges in online teaching. Here you can see that it's skewed to the left. You can even justify uh, or put it in the center. You see, got a line. You can put it in the center. Click this one, you have put it in the center and then it aligns nicely for you. So it looks neat for you, right? Now you can insert an image. So I'm gonna put add image here, all right? And now if you have an image from your computer, you can upload it here. Otherwise, um, you can go to Google image search. So if you have the image in the Google Drive, you can take it from Google Drive. So in Google image search, I am going to put maybe, uh, I'm going to find a picture on online teaching. Ah, so now maybe I have some pictures of online teaching. So maybe I'm going to put this picture. So just double click the picture, you are able to come to the Google Jamboard. So you can resize this. So I have challenges in online teaching. So you can adjust this nicely here. All right. Now the next function for Google Jamboard, this is even more interesting, uh, is where you can invite your students uh, to come and give you some answers, give you some responses for this activity. So how can we do that? Um, so you first to invite your students and first you need to show them how they can respond, how they can answer uh, this question on challenges in online teaching. So what we can do is you go here. You see there is a sticky note. Sticky note. So click sticky note. So now when you click this, you have different colors. You got yellow, you got green, you got blue, you got pink, you got uh, orange, or you don't want any colors or color. Okay, but never mind. I put yellow. So now you can give an answer. What is some of the challenges in online teaching? So I am going to put uh, not. A no stable connection. Or maybe I'm going to put no stable Wi-Fi. Okay. So now when you type like this, no stable Wi-Fi, right? And then you can put save. Click the save button here. And you can see that your answer is now in the background. No stable Wi-Fi. So now you can click cancel. So you see your answer is now here. No stable Wi-Fi. So you can increase it. Ah, you can make it really big. Uh, you can make it small and then you can even tilt it. Uh, you can tilt it. So you can tilt it and put it here. But one of the things I always do is I ask my students to put their name. So I'm going to put Donnie. Okay, no stable Wi-Fi. So I know who is telling what. Uh, so Donnie is the one that is talking about no stable Wi-Fi. Now this one also you can tilt. Uh. You can put tilt like this. You can even put it upside down. But never mind, I don't put it outside down. Okay, okay put it so, so challenges online teaching, so you can put this one. So now I want to invite my students 
to come into this Google Jamboard and do this activity with me. All right, that means I want to tell them come and let me know what are some of the challenges in online teaching. So how can we do that? It's quite easy to do this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to share. Share. OK, and then here when I click share, it's going to appear a box like this. So you can see this one. Change to anyone with a link, click this one. Right. And then here you can change this to editor. Editor. So now the message will be anyone on the Internet with this link can edit. So I am going to copy this link now. Click done and I am going to put the link in the Teams chat now. So can all of you come and join me into Jamboard? So click the link in the chat and you are able to come and join me in Google Jamboard. So can you go and pick the sticky note and do this activity? Okay, what is the challenge? So I already give an uh, answer there. So you cannot follow the same answer. Give me a different answer. What are some of your challenges in online teaching? So use the sticky pad and answer. You can use different, different color. So don't forget to put your name and your answer for that. So you, you can monitor your students here. You can see that uh, seven is already joined online. So there are seven online. Okay, so uh, Chantriga says try. Uh, I'm not sure what is this. Try. You mean testing, is it? Are you testing? It says try here. Okay, so Siva, yes, good. So you have uh, no response from students. Okay, good. Okay, so Siva is adjusting on her own. Okay, then you have Norel, less interaction. So Norel, you want to put it in different parts of the board? Ah, so yes, good. So Yifang, yeah, too many background distractions, good. And then Nora says less interactions. Nini says hard to get response. What's happening? Eh? Somebody unmuted. Eh? Okay. So what else do we have? Uh, payment. One man show. <laughs> one, man sh one man show. One man show. I pity payment. Lah. Okay. And then Yifang is too many backgrounds. So this one, maybe the answer is too small. Uh, so you can make it a little bit big. Uh, so you as the teacher, you can also adjust. Uh. Uh, Nini, hard to get response. Okay, Norel. Okay, Gani, low motivation. Oh, 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 what happened to Gani? Okay, Gani is having low motivation here. Okay, and then um, what is this call? They are too shy to turn on their camera. Okay. So, student not interested. Wow, seems to be quite critical. Huh? Uh, <laughs> student not interested, uh, shy to turn on. You see, uh, one of the things that I do in my class, uh, I already, uh, in the first class, you see, very critical. Huh? The first class itself, you must already lay the, the ground rules, you know, ground rules to your students. One of the first thing that I do in my first class is to let them know that they must turn on their camera. And uh, one of the things that I do is to uh, do the together mode now. I showed you in the morning the together mode now where I need to be able to see them. So if they say that I'm, I'm having bandwidth problem, uh, uh, my internet is low, I will tell them uh, separately. I will note it down. I won't tell them in the class. I will note down their name. After the class, I will email them and tell them, you mentioned that you're having a bandwidth, your low internet uh, is uh, bandwidth is a problem. Can you send me a speed test? Do a speed test and send me the speed test. And from then on, uh, they don't complain anymore. Uh, miraculously, the, the camera is on already the next class. You know, so I told them if you're having a bandwidth problem, do a speed test and send to me. And another student uh, even told me, oh, my camera got problem. Like, I cannot on my camera. My camera got problem. So I, I, I note it down. And the next class, I email the student. I email the student. I told the student, give me your address. I will buy a camera and send it to you. And miraculously, the next class, the camera is working. Not a problem. Huh? 
now this camera you can also get about 40 50 ringgit very cheap camera you can go a very decent one right so sometimes these students are uh, they give you all this kind of uh, excuses are uh. actually is is it's not a problem but it's just they're just giving you the excuse because why uh, uh in my class uh, i've also seen some students uh, where they turn on their camera they're actually not in uh, learning they are in the shopping mall uh, walking around and all this i even know one student uh, who turn on the camera and the student is in an operating theater you know there's a nurse the student is in an operating theater operation is going on and they say oh sorry uh, I, I i cannot uh, follow the class because i am uh, doing operation now so <laughs> can you imagine they turn on the camera in an operating theater no joke you know this is really real life thing happening so students are uh, they are, they are, I think there is always the positive and negative of online, uh, online teaching. Online teaching is you can access anywhere, anywhere you can dial in and all this, but um, there is also a disadvantage where uh, there is abuse. The student abuse the, the, um, the uh, easiness and they abuse the, the, the whole process. La. So this kind of students who they abuse are, are usually uh, the ones that I will say a little bit problematic. So this is where uh, they need to be disciplined uh, in a nice way. So you need to tell them that you are aware uh, that they are not joining and they are not participating. So they know that this uh, lecturer is actually keeping track. They cannot fool around, you know, so they have to participate. Right. Um, and also in my assessment, I do give them marks in, in terms of student interaction and participation. So they know that as part of their course mark, they also have uh, marks for that. So if they don't have participation, they are not able to get marks for that. So these are some things that I can share with all of you. Now. So the first class is actually very, very crucial uh, for you to lay down some ground rules uh, for them. Yeah? Yeah? All right. So I can see that uh, there are quite a number of things. Huh? So cheer up Gani. Okay. Somebody put cheer up Gani. Yeah? So poor Gani. Huh? Where is Gani? Gani is here, is it? Gani, are you here? Poor Gani. Lah. Low motivation. Okay. So now you can see that uh, play games. Okay, good. So there's play games. All right. So now what you can do, this is the students have answered, right? So you can see this very colorful. Eh? Your Google Jamboard now um, is very, very colorful and very, very nice and very, very interesting uh, for you to do. So you can even um, arrange this. What you can do next is um, you can ask your student. Okay, now all of you, you have the tool at the side here, which is a pen. Okay, you have a pen. So if you click the pen here, right, you have a pen, you have marker, you have highlighter, you have brush. Now let's use a marker pen and choose a color that you want. Okay, maybe I'm going to choose red. Now look through all the answers that has been given here. Which answer that you find that is most interesting and the one that you like the best apart from your answer? Can you go and give it a tick? Huh? Can you go and give it a tick? So maybe I am going to go to maybe uh, Siuha and I'm going to give Suha a small tick. So can you all do that? Can you see which answer that you can relate the best, uh, you like the best apart from your answer and go and give it a small tick, small tick beside the sticker. Okay, so I see there's already two, three, uh, three under Peng May, uh, Pei Meng. Okay, three for core also. Uh. Okay, Nini also, wow, one, two, three, four, five, hard to, wow, so many hard to get response, ah, you pity you all, ah, <laughs> you, okay, hopefully after this, <laughs> after this race workshop, you can try to get more response for your class, ah, very pity all, all of you, I feel your pain, okay, I feel your pain, all right, uh, so no stable Wi-Fi, ah, okay, now you all have to be careful, those who mark no stable Wi-Fi, Ask your student to do a speed test. If they really no stable Wi-Fi, then there's nothing much can be done. Usually, uh, uh, I have seen cases where students say they have no stable Wi-Fi, but actually that is just an excuse. They're actually, they're okay. It's just they don't want to turn on um, their internet. But if there really is a problem, then uh, we nothing much we can do on that. So ask them to do a speed test so you can really understand their problem, uh, whether they are really facing that issue. Okay, so now what you can do is, once you have done this marker here, uh, you have the last part, which is the laser pointer. You see here, you have the bottom here, laser pointer. So now, once your student has responded, you can ask your student, okay, let's go through all the responses. Huh? So our topic is on challenges in online teaching. So you see the pointer, the mark is there, the mark to attract your attention and it fades away. 
the mark is not permanent, you know, the mark uh, fades away, you know. So this is something nice about the laser pointer. So you can tell your student, okay, our topic is on challenges in online teaching. Let's see all the answers that is given. And it looks like the answer by uh, Donnie seems to be the most popular one. No stable Wi-Fi. So now you can tell, okay, Donnie, uh, it seems that everyone is agreeable and likes your answer. Can you explain uh, to the class why exactly that you wrote the answer? No stable Wi-Fi. Can you help to explain to us? Ah, so now you can generate some form of interactivity. So now you can generate some form of uh, discussion within the class. Okay. And then here you can also see what other answers. Okay, maybe uh, this one, nobody answer, low motivation, nobody answer. So maybe you can tell the student, why did they actually write this? Can you share with us? You know, so maybe we can uh, understand and see what exactly is the problem and how we can help you, you see. So this is how you can use the laser pointer for your teaching. Okay, now next one, uh, on the top here, here you see one over one. This is your bar, this is your frame bar. So you can even expand. So if you click this, you can expand to a brand new page. So you can go back uh, to the previous page and you can immediately go to a new page. So this helps you in terms of your teaching and learning. Uh, let's say you're discussing something and there's no more space here already, here right now. So you can just click this and you can have a brand new page. And you can open up to 25 pages. Eh? You can open up to 25 pages. So this is page three, this is page four, this is page five. You can open up up to 20 pages. And one of the things that I do is usually, I also do a lot of group work also in Jamboard. So I can just put a text here and I am going to put group one. Okay, so here you can even do a group work. So group one's page is this. Okay, now I'm going to go to the next page and I'm going to put this, this is group two. Okay, and you can expand this. Okay, now I'm going to go to the next page and I am going to put this, this is my group three. Uh, see, so simple and easy, group three. So now you can even ask your students to do group work. So group one, this is your page. Group 2, this is your page. Group 3, this is your page. And then at the end of the lesson, if you want to recap, you can always go back to the first page. Now, as your students are, you can also monitor. So you can click this one. And you can monitor across what is happening in group 1, what is happening in group 2, what is happening in group 3. See, so you can easily navigate. You can easily go and navigate between the pages and see what is happening in between the pages. Here, it also lets you know which student is in what page. Ah, so you see, for example, this is group one, uh, got one person here. But you cannot see the name. Lah. So that's why you have to add them. Ah. You want to add them. So you see this one, somebody is traveling. Uh, now it's going to group two. The next person is traveling the next page. So how to make sure your, how to, okay, for example, lah, how do you see how many students are in your jam board? You can see on the top here. So you can see there's total 11 students are in your jam board now. But, uh, you cannot see their name because all written anonymous, <coughs> anonymous, 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 right? So now there is a way that uh, you can see your student's name, okay? That means you can see that they are actually here and you can see their student's name. How to do that? Anyone knows? How to see your student's name here? All this is anonymous. Anyone else? No idea. If you don't know, I also don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No lah. Just joking lah. Okay. Uh, let me show you. Can you give me a, a Gmail address? Um, any of your Gmail address? Can you give me a Gmail address? You can type in the chat. Any of your Gmail address. Ah, okay, so Siuha is given a Gmail, so I'm going to copy her Gmail. Okay, so now what I'm going to, so for you to do this, you must have all your students' Gmail. Huh? You must have all your students' Gmail. So maybe uh, in the first class, ask them all their emails already, huh? all their Gmail and all, Gmail, huh? don't Yahoo, Hotmail, all the one, only Gmail, huh? only Gmail, because you're using Google application, so you must only be Gmail. Okay, now for example, Siuha has a Gmail, so I'm going to click share. 
share. Okay, and I'm going to add Suha's name here. So no need to put anything, no need to notify anything. Huh? So I'm going to put Suha. Can I have another email, another Gmail? Anyone's Gmail? Any other Gmail that you have? Okay. Uh, Yi Fang has also shared a Gmail. Okay. So now I'm going to put uh, Siu Ha and Yi Fang's email. Now you can even type a message. Lah. Okay. Uh, dear students, uh, please open this file. Okay. Open this file. Okay. Now I'm going to send this. So, uh, Siu Hua and uh, Yi Fang, you have to go to your Gmail account. Go to your Gmail account and click from there. Can you do that? Go to your Gmail account and click from there. Okay. Uh, now you see Yi Fang has just joined. I got a notification. So, now if you go to the list here, Right, and you scroll down, you can see your student name is here. Yi Fang is here. Um, yes, Noel, uh, you can use UM mail and Siswa mail. Um, students can use their Siswa mail, can because why the Siswa mail and UM mail is based on Google platform, so they can even put their Siswa mail. But remember, the Siswa mail sometimes they forgot to put Siswa 365 uh, at siswa365.um.edu.my so if they forgot to put that then it won't capture uh, so you have to tell your students make sure you enter the correct email so they can even put their siswa mail uh, you can even put a your email so now you can see that uh, Yi Fang is here um, another one is payment payment have you have you opened your email let me just refresh this and see Not yet. I think payments still haven't applied, uh, haven't signed in yet. Having problem. Okay. Um, yeah, I think somebody just joined in. So this is how you can uh, monitor your students as well so if you add their email here ah uh, there you see suha is already here so if you add their email you can see them that they are online and doing this activity so this is how you can track who is the student that is participating and who is not so for example like the class uh, today you have about 19 students online so now you can see that out of 19 how many is actually here and doing the activity only 11 what happened to another eight we don't know okay so this is what is happening right so there are 19 but only 11 that is doing the um, activity only 12 is doing the activity so this is how you can monitor so you see your student's name so my recommended practice is to always add your student so here if you add them um, so you are able to monitor them uh, so um, in your first class itself um, get a list of your students with all the emails uh, so that you are able to do this activity uh, continuously all right okay so this is on google jamboard right um so i'm done with google jamboard any questions on google jamboard have any of you tried using google jamboard before or or this is the uh, first time you all are uh, hearing about this anyone tried before google jamboard no uh, nobody tried before so what do you all think about this uh, Google Jamboard? Do you think that first time, huh? okay, first time, okay, I've been using it before, all right. So what do you think about this activity Google Jamboard? Do you think that is going to be interesting, beneficial for your classroom? Uh, this Google Jamboard? <laughs> Better than whiteboard, huh? okay, Azizi also say first time, huh? first time using this. Okay, all right. So this is uh, Google. Siu uh, Hua, you say better than whiteboard. What what whiteboard? Huh? What whiteboard you're talking about? 
Is it the classroom whiteboard or what? Or Microsoft Teams whiteboard? Oh. Uh, micro, Microsoft Teams whiteboard. Whiteboard in Teams uh, yeah. is better than whiteboard. Uh. Why you say it's better than whiteboard? Uh? Uh, because this one we can like uh, distribute to few pages. So okay. yeah, for that whiteboard, right? I think just uh, like one page. Mm. Okay. All right. So you find that the page limitation is the problem. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. So no one says whiteboard in Teams, I think. Okay, no problem. Huh? All right, so this is regarding Google Jamboard. Okay, now I'm going to bring you to the next one, which is Microsoft Whiteboard. Okay, and maybe there are some functionalities here that we are not really sure of. Huh? So let me just explore this Whiteboard with you and see how you can be used. So this one can be easily integrated with Teams. Um, you can write, you can draw, you can insert text, pictures, sticky notes. Uh, insert PDF, Microsoft Word, and also PowerPoint. So you can even insert documents as part of your uh, lesson, you know. So that makes it very, very interesting um, to use, okay. But some of you maybe have not very pleasant experience with using Microsoft Whiteboard. Huh? Um, so let's let's just go through Microsoft Whiteboard and see. Yeah? Uh, no one says if we use that, it won't appear in our recorded lecture. You mean Whiteboard, is it? When you use whiteboard, it doesn't appear in recorded lectures, is eh? it? Yes, okay. Hmm. I've never really tried this part, uh, whether it appears on recorded lecture. But let me check. Since this lecture is recorded now, um, I'm going to activate whiteboard and show you about whiteboard. And let's see whether the whiteboard actually features in the recording. Uh, maybe there's some setting issues there. Okay, so to start whiteboard, uh, first, uh, you have to, how you share your screen, you see on the top of your top right, you have the camera, you have the microphone and you have the arrow, uh, the arrow facing up. So click that one, all right, and in that screen, you will have Microsoft Whiteboard. Let me take a snipping tool of this. Uh. Okay, so let me just share the screen. Okay, so this is how the screen sharing looks like, right? Right, so you have the share content. Ah, yeah, this one, uh, I, I forgot to tell you all in the morning. In case you were to share any videos or anything uh, that has any music or what, don't forget to toggle this. Uh, um, in case you, you play a video or what, and people say there's no sound, I cannot hear any sound, you have to on this, you have to on this. So don't forget. Uh. So you what you need to do is stop sharing, stop sharing, uh, and uh, share again and then on this one uh, to include your computer sound. Okay, now in the share content, this is how you can share your Microsoft whiteboard. So you have your Microsoft whiteboard here, right? So you're going to click this one and then you are able to share Microsoft whiteboard. Okay, so let's see um, what is Microsoft whiteboard all about. So I'm going to go to Microsoft whiteboard now. Okay, so now I click Microsoft Whiteboard and it's loading. Okay, you you are, you will be able to see uh, Whiteboard uh, coming up very soon. Okay, so now you have a Microsoft Whiteboard like this. Are you all able to see the Microsoft Whiteboard on your side? Not yet. Uh, not yet. Uh, there I'm is there's nothing appearing on your screen. Yeah, nothing. Okay. Um, all right. So let me share my screen again. Okay. How about now? Now you can see the whiteboard, right? Yes. Okay. Can't see again. <laughs> Disappear. Okay. Just, okay. Just a moment, huh? Let me just sneak this uh, application. Sometimes it can get a little bit tricky, uh, but uh, Microsoft Whiteboard is actually a very, very good application. Um, what I would suggest is instead of owning it through Teams, one of the things you can do is you can install it in your computer so that you can launch it straight from there, uh, which is much more stable. Uh, okay. 
now I'm going to open whiteboard here. Okay, are you all able to see the Microsoft whiteboard now? Can, ah? Wonderful. Okay, so now Microsoft whiteboard is now on, ah? So you can see now. Yes, okay, good. So you can see Microsoft whiteboard, right? So the same thing, ah? I never do anything different. I just share. Ah, I just go and I just share. Now you can see Microsoft whiteboard. Now, one thing good about Microsoft whiteboard here is you can start drawing okay so you can see some of our friends already start drawing so here you can put some notes so let me start with a text so you can put for example a text here um, uh, advantages advantages of online teaching okay so now you can even put the text color uh, you want to put it in red or you want to put it in purple or you want to put it in blue so you can see that is very much different than google jamboard just now huh? so here you can change uh, you can change the the, the color uh, you can make it even more uh, this one all right now uh, you can even make it big okay you can even make it big and uh, you can make it in the center okay and then here now you have advantages of uh, online teaching all right so you can make it oh, oh sorry okay now you can make it big like this okay now what you can do is, all right, you can see, uh, okay, do we need to download? No, 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 you can just uh, share from here. You can already do it. No need to download. I didn't download this now also either, okay? So now you have challenges of uh, online teaching, all right? Now, what you can do is, uh, I'm going to stretch it here. Okay, now what you can do is, uh, here you have notes, right? You have notes. So you have different, different notes. You even have a note grid here, right? So you can even use a note grid and you can put a note grid here. Okay, and then here you can start discussing. So you can use this note grid to start discussing here. So you can see that this is your title. Now your mouse, you have a scroll, you have a roller. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Your mouse has a roller, you can zoom in and zoom out here. So now for example, or if you don't have a roller in your mouse, you see at your bottom left here, you have the zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so I think uh, one of our friends mentioned earlier, uh, there's not enough space, uh, Microsoft Teams. So what happens if I, uh, Microsoft Whiteboard, not enough space? What happens now? You see, if I zoom out, this is the amount of space that you can use for your whiteboard. You see, all this area, all this area at the uh, rest of the this is how big your Microsoft whiteboard is actually so you can use all these areas uh, so it's actually very very large the only thing is when you zoom in you just have to scroll you just have to scroll and go here okay so for example if I go here now and I put a different template here so uh, for example I'm going to put uh, this notepad here okay I'm going to put a notepad here okay and maybe here I'm going to put another notepad here okay and then here I'm going to put another notepad here all right so now what is going to happen is you can see that this is my uh, notepad. Now I'm going to go here another area here, another section here. And then maybe I'm going to put another uh, notepad area here. So you can see that when I, I zoom out, I'm only using this space. I'm already using this space, but I have so much more. I have so much more to use. And all this is under one page, under one application called Microsoft Whiteboard. So there is actually a lot of space a lot of space that you can use for your uh, microsoft whiteboard so it's not actually limited lah. it's not actually limited as um, google jamboard google jamboard you only have 25 pages whereas microsoft whiteboard uh, you zoom out and you can have a very large space and you can use it anytime you want so same thing as how we learn for google jamboard you can use this um, and type you know you can ask your students to come and type so um, now can all of you type something in this sticky note? So maybe put your name and your answer. What are some of the advantages of online teaching? Uh, maybe here, this one. I think somebody is in other groups. I mean, delete this. Okay, so look at this sticky pad here. You can just click edit or you can just double click. Okay, and then you can write your name. Edit. Okay, and then you can type. What are some of the advantages of online teaching? 
click the pencil here, edit here, and you can type your name. Okay, so I think, uh, okay, this one, no, this one is not the right press. Okay, Azizi, I'm going to delete this. Okay, I'm going to delete this. Let's just focus on one. Uh. Okay, let's just focus on one, this one, the sticky pad, this one. So, Norel, yes, it can be recorded. Students can refer to it anytime. All right. Okay, what are advantages of online teaching? So, I'm going to put more sticky note here. Okay, so this is going to be another sticky note here. See, now I can really make use beneficial for the whole class. I can put it side by side. So, Dini, interesting. Nini, flexible. Okay, Siuha, flexible. Good. So, now you can see, you notice that uh, uh, the difference between this and Jamboard, you can actually know your student is where. You see, for example, I know that uh, Ghani is here. You see, uh, for example, I know this student is here. So, each student is actually writing something on a sticky note. So, you see, as easy. Uh, teaching and learning can be anywhere, anytime. Uh, so this student is at this sticky pad. So I know, you see their face comes out. You see this face comes out. Core, no need to wear mask. <laughs> Core, advantages of online teaching. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I actually like this answer a lot. <laughs> no need to wear mask. Huh? Good, good, good. Yeah. And then uh, Yi Fang, yes, it's convenient. Okay. And you can even change. Uh, you can even change the the color uh. so you see for example this is yellow i can change it to pink uh, for example right and then uh, online learning saves traveling time okay this one i think somebody has posted this but you have using uh, you have using a text uh. so you can just click on the sticky pad and edit uh, click the pencil edit text and you can edit inside here okay i'm just going to delete this see so now you can just center this and it's so nice so lovely to use you know and then let me see uh. What other things you have here? You have a reaction. So you have a reaction. So now I can even put reaction. Which answer I like the best? Okay, I like cause answer. Okay, so I'm going to give cause answer here. Okay, a tick here. Okay, now the next one. Uh, maybe I like this answer. So Dini is interesting. So I'm going to put Dini a nice emoticon here. Okay, so maybe I, I don't understand... Uh, what Ghani is telling can be creative. So I'm going to put a question mark here. So now I can even organize. Okay, so now uh, maybe the one is question mark. I'm going to explain. Ask the students who can explain. Okay, maybe flexible. I don't also understand. So maybe I can. Okay, Nini, can you explain the class? Ghani, can you explain? So you can even use the reaction and some, okay, answers. This is nice answer. I'm going to give it a star. All right. So you can even use the reaction here. And here, you can even have the template. So you see, you have even have different, different templates. So if you want to do a brainstorming, uh, you can even use a brainstorming template. For example, you got brain writing, you got mood board, you got topic. Uh, and then let's say if you do a brainstorming for this, right? You want to do a brainstorming. So now you can see that um, I've done a brainstorming template here. I'm going to zoom in, right? So now here you can even do a a brainstorming activity here in the class. So maybe you can put whatever title you want. What is the description? What is the ideas? So you see, if you zoom in here, so you can write what is the ideas? What is the theme? What is the theme? And then you can even immediately type your answer here, you know? So all the boxes are really provided. So you can even type your answer straight away here. So this is some of the template that is available. And you see how much space I've used? I only use this amount of space. So little. See, I'm zooming out some more. <laughs> so this is just one, one Microsoft application, you know. So you can use anywhere around. So much space you have. But you zoom in, okay, and you only have a specific area you can work on. So this is what Microsoft Whiteboard is capable of doing, right? So you have infinity amount of space, a lot of space you can do. And uh, one of the best part about this is, you can even upload images. You, know, you can have image from here or you can even um, take it from uh, the Microsoft, um, uh, what is this, Bing engine. Another one best thing that I like about Microsoft Whiteboard is the ability to uh, put documents. Okay, ability to put documents. So for example, uh, let's say that I am discussing, okay, advantages of online teaching. So I'm discussing about a journal article that I'm writing. I think somebody is uh, changing the landscape a little bit. Okay, never mind. So now let's say if you go to document, you click document, right? Click document. Now in document, you are able to find uh, what 
is your uh, documents that you want to put inside here. Okay, so for example, uh, I go to, uh, let me see where I can find this. I want to go to my desktop. So go to documents. So I want to go to my desktop. So you can click more places. And here in more places, you can find uh, other documents that you want, right? Mm, where is it? You can. No, this is all inside here. Uh, just a moment, huh? Just want to find where is it? Just. Okay. What happened to the? You have documents here, so it looks like they have only limited it to this part. So if you have any documents, the best part is you can do is you upload the documents into your uh, Microsoft 365 first. Uh, you have your Microsoft 365, so you upload that document inside there, and from there you can pull the document into your Microsoft Teams. Last time they had a capability where you can upload straight from your desktop, but looks like they have removed that uh, capability now. Um, so now you can even upload. So for example, uh, I want to upload my PowerPoint slide here. So I'm going to select this, for example. Okay, and now I have my PowerPoint slide is loading. Okay, what happened? Let me on back the whiteboard. Maybe too heavy, and huh? too much. The some of the PowerPoints that uh, you we have has uh, too much um, data because some of the PowerPoints I have have videos and all this. That's why the thing uh, crash. But you get the idea, lah. You can uh, upload the PowerPoints into your OneDrive. You can upload the PowerPoints into your 365, and then from there you click the documents, and you are able to link. You are able to link and put the documents into the uh your your desktop here and you can immediately discuss so that makes it even more interesting let me try this one and see yeah uh, and just select this and see whether it works ah there you go so uh, this is a very small powerpoint uh, that's why it's so easy to this one see so this is actually a picture from my powerpoint slide so I've already taken a, a, a from a PowerPoint slide. Now you see I can even put it side by side. So let's say if you have a journal article uh, and you upload it in 365, Microsoft 365, you can even pull the PDF, you can pull the Word, you can pull the PowerPoint. It becomes like an image here. So you, you can even put the article or you can put your slide side by side and you can start teaching based on that. So this is like your notes. On your right is your notes, on your left is what you are teaching your class. Right, so this is what Microsoft Whiteboard is all about. Of course, you even have the annotation. Huh? So you have the, the pens here. You got the black pen, green pen, red pen. You got a highlighter here. So you can even uh, chon thing. Lah. Uh, you want to chon thing and you want to highlight anything here. You want to draw anything here. You can also draw. So there's a lot of things you can do in Microsoft Whiteboard. You know, so you want to erase this, you can even erase. So there's a lot of things you can do, right? So actually, Microsoft Whiteboard is a very, very useful tool. Um, if we know how to use it uh, to the full advantage, you know how to use it correctly, then it's going to be a very, very interesting application to use. Okay, so this is on Microsoft Whiteboard. You all have any question on Microsoft Whiteboard? Uh, uh, Donny. Yeah, yeah. I have a question uh, yeah. because uh, I'm using a touch, touch screen laptop. Okay. So so I try to like uh no draw on the screen by using this uh, Microsoft whiteboard. Yeah. But uh, I have encountered some problem. Um, my screen like uh turn no blackout. Huh? So student um my screen suddenly blackout when I um draw on my screen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then I have to restart my computer like many times <laughs> within one hour. So so is it uh, due to my laptop performance? Problem or the whiteboard problem? <laughs> is is your laptop an old laptop or new one? Ah, uh, two years old. <laughs> two years old. I think maybe oh. not enough memory. I think 
Oh, I Maybe see. your laptop. Ah, uh, so sometimes if your laptop has not enough memory, it will crash. Uh, right. because uh, you are doing too many tasks at one time. The computer cannot support it. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, so you try it in a different machine. Try it in a different machine. Like now, what I'm doing now, um, I'm doing many tasks at one time. But you see, I'm able to support. But sometimes uh -huh. it's the computer memory. Okay. Okay. Understand. All right. Thank you. Okay. So uh -huh. you try it as you are. Okay. Any other questions you'll have on Microsoft Whiteboard? Okay, nah? so everyone is okay yeah, with Microsoft Whiteboard, yeah? So those of you who have a nightmare on uh, <laughs> Microsoft Whiteboard, uh, you try to practice, uh, try to practice and try to experiment on this, uh, all right? Uh, and you can even um, export images. You see here, you even have the gear icon here, right? At the gear icon, um, you can even export image. Uh, so that means whatever that you discuss here, you can even save it as an image in your computer. Okay. So those of you who got nightmare before, uh, try to experiment and try to play around. Uh. This is actually a very, very nice, uh, excellent tool. Okay. So you're actually missing out a lot. Uh, so try to maybe go and... Uh, uh, experiment on it back again so that you are able to use uh, use it better. So you can see that, for example, I just did some short demonstration. There's so many much more feature uh, compared to Jamboard. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So that's all um, about Microsoft Whiteboard. Okay. Uh, any questions on Microsoft Whiteboard? No questions, ah. Huh? No questions is good, lah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, now it's about three, uh, three ten, ah, uh, three ten. Maybe we take a short uh, ten minutes break, okay, and then we come back at three twenty. Okay, come back at three twenty, right? And then um, I will show you some other application that we can use. Okay, we come back at three twenty. Okay, everyone, uh, are we okay to proceed? Everyone back? Okay, that's a thumbs up, yeah? But only one, uh. <laughs> How about the rest? Uh, okay to proceed? Okay, there's a thumbs up here as well. Okay, good. All right, let's proceed. Uh, okay, the next one I will... The next one I'd like to share with all of you is um, what we call Padlet, right? Um, some of you might have used this uh, application before, as uh, some of you might be hearing it for the first time. Uh, Padlet is a very useful information for us to share and collaborate between our students, right? Uh, here you are able to post a lot, lot of notes, you can link, uh, post a lot of links, uh, there's a lot of videos, images, and even uh, document files. Uh, so it's a very, very nice uh, interactive activity, yeah? uh, a, a very nice application for you to use. So uh, first thing is, I'm going to share with you this one. Uh, can you go and sign up for Padlet? So I'm going to give you this link in the chat. So can you click that link? and sign up for Padlet. So you need to sign up first. Huh? And you don't have to uh, sign up uh, as an account, register a new account. You just have to link it to one of your Google. So they give you a Google, Microsoft or Apple. So you just sign into your Google account. That will do. Okay, so I give you some time now uh, for you to do that. So sign up for the author. Uh, you need to sign up uh, because after this, when you enter into Padlet, you don't sign up. It's easy to know whether you have not signed up. So you, it's best to encourage. When we do this activity with the students, also ask them to sign up. And I'll tell you why, yeah? why to sign up later. So you can choose the free option. Just choose the free option. You don't have to pay anything. Just choose the free option. Okay, so Siuha uh, says done. Um, anyone else, if you're already done, can you put in the chat done? Okay, done, done, done. Okay, nice. Okay, now let's go to the second link. Can you click this link now? 
Okay, click this link now. And it will bring you to something that looks like this. Ah, so now you see there is a padlet here. This is what we call a padlet. So now you have an instruction here. Welcome guys and girls. Take a selfie with a smile. Introduce yourself. Share with us what you have learned from this workshop. Ah, so can you all do this activity now? So click this uh, plus sign here. Click this plus sign. Uh, you'll be able to get something like this. So subject, you can type your name. Um, hi or, or whatever you can type your name here your uh, uh, you just put and then here you can write a message okay and then here you can take a photo uh, you, or you want to upload a photo from your computer that's also fine so you can even upload a photo right? so you can go here you can search for an image or you can even um, upload here right so can you all do this i give you some time now uh, there is somebody signing in uh, never sign uh, so I can see here there is someone who did not do the author sign up. There are two links here. So you need to click the first link first. Sign up under Padlet, then you click the second link. Okay, so I can see on top, you can see your students joining here. You can see they are already on top here. Um, you can see their faces here, all right? Okay, so I give you some time to complete this Padlet. Ah, so you see aloha. So way thing is put aloha. So can you put a message? I don't don't put this one lah. Put put your your own picture because we uh, the, uh, this will be a documentation as well that who attended this workshop. So put your 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 own picture here and put what have you learned uh, from this workshop. Okay. So don't put a coconut lah. <laughs> there's a sunshine. There's a coconut. So how do you edit? You click this. Click this and you can edit, edit post, all right? Uh, okay, Azizi, hello, can you put in Azizi, edit here. What have you learned from this workshop? So you can write a message here. What have you learned from this workshop? So this is a, a ice breaking activity that you can do for your classes or so. Uh, you can even do instead of the normal first day class where you ask everyone, OK, what's your name, where you're from? Uh, uh, what is your expectation? What is your interest in this course? So you can do something like this, uh, which is very, very um, useful and it's very, very interesting. Uh, you see, for example, wheel of name will be fun to play with. Yes, good. So I can see Pei Ming has uh, put that. Okay, and then Azizi has also shared fantastic tools can be used in virtual teaching and learning. Okay, nice. Okay, Siu Ha uh, waiting for your photo there and waiting for others also. How many we have online? Huh? So the participation is quite poor. I wonder what's happening with the rest. There are 18 of online, but participation is quite poor all right so uh, yi fang yes hi yi fang okay so yi fang can you put a message you can edit yeah click edit here edit post and you can put a message what what have you learned uh, from this workshop okay and for the rest of you have already done you can even go and comment huh? you can go in like you can even go and like, um, you can even go and comment. You can go and comment on uh, any of the Padlet here. You can even change the color, yeah? You can even change the color. So you can even change, uh, maybe I'm going to put it blue color, you see? So you can even change the color of your Padlet. Okay, uh, Gani, yes, I can see you. Hi, can you put a message, Gani? What have you learned from this workshop? So you can click edit here, edit post. Okay, what have you learned from this workshop? Uh, Siu Ha, yes, good afternoon. I have learned how to use Teams in conducting online class. Besides, I've also learned how to use online tools to interact better. Okay, nice. Very nice. Okay. Uh, Yi Fang, okay, good. Cool. Microsoft Teams, OneNote, Whiteboard, Google Jamboard. Excellent. Um, so, yes, Dini says, I learned a lot. Good. 
and then I Nini has two, is it? Or is this two different? Two different person. Okay, so you have my name is Nini. One is Dini, one is Nini. Dini and Nini. Oh, 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 oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Very similar. Uh, Dini and Nini. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, can't see the main tea, otherwise we can see. Okay, so my name is Nini. This workshop has taught me a lot. Most interesting part is learning how to use Teams. Okay, good. So Norel, can't wait to use Jamboard and Sway. Okay, good. So Noel, so nice to see you here. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay, so you can go in like, uh, you can go in like and um, uh, you can comment on each other's post. So this is a very nice ice breaking tool. Uh. You can even do it for your class, you see. So it makes your, and then one thing good is you can keep this as a memory. Uh, one of the things that I always do in my first class uh, as an ice breaking, I do this activity because why? I want to see, I want to remember who is the student behind the name because sometimes uh, if you have bandwidth problem, camera problem, you, you don't know who your student is, you, you, you don't know how they look like. So when they do this kind of activity, uh, you're able to capture, okay, uh, how is their face? What is the face behind the name? Otherwise, you're, you're not able to relate. Huh? So each time of the classes, you can open like this so that, you know, you can uh, relate to your students, okay? So you see there's somebody anonymous. I don't even know who's the name here, anonymous. So when you don't sign up for Padlet, it will come up anonymous here. So when you see anonymous means the person have not signed for the uh, sign up for Padlet. Remember the first link uh, that is to sign up for Padlet. So sorry, I can't find my own photo. Thank you for teaching us. We learn a lot. Okay, no problem. Huh? So this is what Padlet can do. Now under Padlet, uh, you have many types of template under Padlet. Huh? So if you see, for example, if I go to the Padlet website and I make a Padlet, right? You have many types of palette. The one that I'm using now is called uh, this one, grid, grid. The one I'm using now is called grid, right? But you have many types. You got wall, uh, then you got stream. Stream is uh, top down lah. Then you have shelf. Uh, you have map, canvas, timeline. So you see, for example, shelf. Uh, I show you an example of how shelf looks like. Now, if you see a shelf palette, it looks something like this. See, I, I, I did with uh, one of my class. Observe, reflect, and share. So I put here a picture stimulus. Do not type below this. So I give them a picture here. I give them a picture of what is happening in a classroom, right? What is happening in classroom? Now I give them a heading here. Step one, what do you see? List all the things you see from the picture. So you can see that the students are answering all the things that they see. Step two. What do you think is happening? Provide an option. So they click the plus sign and they are able to give their response. Step three, what is something that you reflect? Note down your question, you see? So it's very interesting that you can put it according to rows. Step one, step two, step three. This is what you call shelf. What is the difference between this and this? Can anyone share with me? What do you, do you notice between this uh, padlet and this one? What is the difference? Is there any difference? Uh, no sequence in the first one. Good. Yes. In sequential in the second one. Yes, second one was sequential. Okay. Any other difference? More organized. Yes. Good. Something is missing. Something is missing from your answer. A very major difference between this and this one. What is the major difference? More organized is sequence, okay? Anything else? What you will notice that is very different between this and this. So it's the same pattern, huh? it's the same platform, but you will notice that in here, right? I have the students' names. So you see, I have Noor, and then I have Hef, F. Chong, and then I have Wei Jian, right? I have the student names here, and then I can see their message. Whereas this one, there's no names. The students' names is not here. So whenever you do a class activity and you ask them this kind of question, they don't feel a fear. So that means uh, I, I don't have to worry about whether my answer is correct or wrong because my name is not there. I am free to answer anything I want. 
Uh, so I am uh, more happy to contribute because uh, my name is not there. Because this one, your name is there. So you can know, oh, Nini, you answered wrongly. Ah, uh, uh, Nini, uh, maybe you stay back half an hour after class. Uh, I want to give you an extra class uh, because you answered wrongly. Uh, example, uh, joking. Uh. Okay, but here you can see that this encourage more participation because the name is not captured only the answers is captured so this is what the firm format is different so this padlet and this padlet even though it's under the same application but it's different altogether and one thing you can do about this is you can even uh, document this in your course file ah you see anis is here ah oh 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 ani has put a uh, attention message here <laughs> So, kindly ensure that you have filled in the attendance form and feedback before leaving. Ah, links will be given, okay? So, Anis is already here. Anis is already given here, okay? One thing good about this Padlet is you can even um, save it in your course file, okay? You, go, you can go to the uh, three dots here, all right? And then, what you can do is uh, you can even export, okay? You can click export. Eh, sorry, not export, man. Uh, here you go to uh, here you can print you can click print and here you can document it in a PDF you see so the PDF will work and now you see you can even document it as a PDF and you can store this in your teaching portfolio you can store this in your uh, course files uh, that you have so this is some of the classroom activities you have done so the students photo the the comments and everything is here whatever the student write is everything is here as well so this is very very uh interesting and very very valuable and and uh nice for you okay now the next thing you can do is let me see what has happened to that option ah yes so now if you click this uh dots here three dots you click export click export all right now you can even save as an image save as an image so if you save this as an image um padlet is going to store this as an image for you so you see like for example dark room in use uh do not enter so what is going to happen is they're going to save this as an image for you so you just wait for a short while uh, they are going to save this as an image now you see what happens once you save this as an image now it becomes a a nice photo album like you see so you can even download and you can keep this so nice ah so nice you see like what uh uh yi fang says cool ah uh, very very nice and very very useful you see so very beautiful and nice so you can keep this as a memory lah uh, once uh, everything is over uh, you can keep this as a memory okay so this is on padlet okay any questions on padlet you all have any questions on padlet no questions ah huh? okay so now uh if there's no questions let me proceed to the next one okay um so next one is okay let me see there is a chat here i've used padlet before but never know it'd be so interesting <laughs> okay yes ah. Huh? Uh, there are many ways, uh, there are many ways that you can do that. Uh, so you can experiment. Uh. Seems like an add section. Yes, yes, uh, you can add section. Okay, so you try to experiment on that. Now, there are other applications that you can use, uh, but I won't be uh, looking into it very closely. There are other applications you can see is called Kahoot. Uh, so some of you are already familiar with Kahoot. In fact, Kahoot is already overused. Lah. Many people are using Kahoot. So there's another alternative to Kahoot. Uh, it's called Quizzes. Uh, que quizzes. Something like this. Lah. Quizzes. So this is another gamified quiz. Gamified quiz. Uh. Um, Kahoot, many people have used. But Quizzes is something that is a little bit different than, than Kahoot. Okay. Uh, let's try to play quizzes uh, and see uh, how does it work like, okay? So I'm going to go to quizzes. Um, I'm going to give you a link so you can enter this. We are going to play a short quiz. Uh. Okay, so let's go to, okay, let me, let me just share the screen. Okay, click that one, click the, the link in the chat. So we're going to play a short quiz here. So when you click this uh, link in the chat, can you enter in this game code? 
this is the game code enter in the game code and you will need to put your name and then you will see your name appears there Ah, so one person has joined. Okay, Suha Azizi has joined. Okay, and then uh, who? Gani has joined. Yifang, Pei Meng, Norail. Okay, six person. Any others going to join? Okay, Dini, Dini. Okay, nice. Okay, another 10 seconds more before we start. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And this is a code. 610778. Okay, let's start, yeah? Okay, get ready. Okay, there's a sound here. Okay, so what is the, who is the leading? Now you can see a scoreboard. Who is leading? Okay, Azizi is leading and Payment is also leading. So the correct answer is uh, Dato Sri Ismaila. Oh, 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 uh, Tan Sri Mohidin is already the former Prime Minister. Yeah, okay, next question. Okay, Malaysia's national power. Okay, let's see who is leading now. Okay, uh, Azizi is still leading. So the correct answer will be high biscus. Huh? So you can see that down here, two over six means that two questions over six questions. Huh? So now let's go to next question. This is the third question. Okay, so we see the leaderboard. Okay, Asprina is now leading and the correct answer for this will be 31st of August. 16th September is Malaysia Day, yeah? Okay, next question. Okay, so Azizi is back to leading and the correct question is Kada. So this is the second last question. So now we can see that um, Azizi is still leading and the correct question is Rhino Hornbills. Eagles, uh, somebody answered, two people answer Eagles. Eagles maybe like to go to Langkawi. Uh. <laughs> Eagles is, is not uh, Rhino Hornbills. Uh. Okay, and the last question.
Okay, so you can see that the winner for this will be um, Azizi, yeah? So there's no more next question, yeah? So it's already over. So this is the last quiz. Now, one thing good about quizzes, yeah? They will tell you, the, okay, you got a, you got a leaderboard here. It's not as grand as uh, Kahoot where you have a nice music and it presents to you, but you get an idea who is the first, second, and uh, third person here, okay? And then here, uh, you are even able to see who is the next, uh, who got it 100% correctly and all this, uh, all right? Now, you can even go to the results. Uh, you can go to skipping to the results section. And here, you can even get an overview. All the participants' name, question one to question six, who has got it correctly and who has got it wrongly. So you can even monitor from here. Uh, you can see who has got it correctly and who has got it wrongly. Uh, so this is something that is very interesting and useful also for us uh, as uh, as a uh, educator. So you can see which a student has mastered and which is not. Okay. Uh, the next one uh, to... Uh, okay, any, any questions on this? Any questions on uh, quizzes? Okay, no questions, huh? Okay, now the next one that we're going to look at is called Add Puzzle. Add Puzzle. So, Add Puzzle is another uh, interesting application. This is a video-based application, huh? Add Puzzle. Let me share with you the link here. Okay. So if you go to this link here, okay, so when you click this link, you're going to go to the Add Puzzle website. Now, what is so interesting about Add Puzzle is, okay, so first you have to uh, log in, uh, sign in with Google. So you click sign in Google, and then you can go to your um, account and you will go to that. Uh, what is one thing very interesting about Add Puzzle is you can put a video and in that video, you can even put Q&A. You can even put question and answer here. So as the student view the video, they can answer the questions along the time. So for example, uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, the video is going to play and it's going to stop at a certain junction. Ah, so you see what happens. The video is playing and the video stops at a certain direction. So you see, for example, there is an open-ended question. So you can put a question for your student here. Um, what is the question? So they have to give you the answer. So this is something that I already typed before. Okay, and then you click continue. Ah, you click continue and the video is going to continue playing. So you can put as many questions as you want. So you see on your right, I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven questions all together. So you can use this uh, and you can also track which student has viewed the video and which student has answered correctly and wrongly. You have to log into Puzzle account to be able to view this. So this is something that you can do a flip classroom uh, where you can give a video and ask them to do a Q&A. You can do a quiz uh, based on that video and then they answer correctly. Uh, you can even grade them based on that. Okay, this is using Puzzle. Okay, any questions on Add Puzzle? No questions, huh? Can follow, huh, so far? <laughs> Everyone okay? Can follow so far? Okay, now let's go to the next last one eh? last one eh? maybe you all are already tired eh? go to the next one last one this is on an application called classroom screen right so i'm going to share this application to you in the chat okay what is classroom screen so if you click this classroom screen this is an application eh? it's like a, your own dashboard you know your own dashboard so this is also free you click launch now this button launch now now, this is something that is very, very uh, useful and free, you see. So, you have a nice uh, background at the back. Uh, so, you can change even the background. So, you click background here. Uh, you can change to different, different background. Uh, maybe you can put even this one. So, this is in uh, Golden Gate Bridge at San Francisco. So, if you want this, you want to change to even to Colosseum. Um, uh, this one is in Petra, Jordan. So, all these are high definition picture. Now, you can even have motion pictures, animation. So, you can even put a uh, umbon uh, api. You can put a uh, uh, fire here. So, you can put this one. And then here, you can even have a random name here. So, you even have an application here. 
So you can type um, all the names here, for example. Okay, and then, um, so for example, Azizi, you can type up to 100 names here. And this application can help you to choose randomly. Uh, which student that you you can ask uh, any Q&A or you want them to do any particular task, this application can help you to choose that, right? And then you even have uh, dice. I don't know what to do with this. I have no idea yet. But if you think you have any idea, you can go ahead and do. These are just some dices for you to, to do and play along with it. And then here you even have media. Um, so media, you can even put image. Huh? You can put an image. You can put a YouTube. Everything can go side by side. Um, you can even put as many media as you want. See, you can even have two boxes here. So there was one training that I did for online teaching uh, for kindergarten, you know. So the teacher says, uh, I want to play a YouTube and I want my student to sing along. Children, uh, uh, so they say, how? Uh? So I say, can, can do. So you put a YouTube video here, okay, and then you put a text box, you see. So you have a text box. So you can put the lyrics, you can put side by side. Uh, you put a text box here, side by side. So you put a YouTube video here and you put a text box so the children can see the text box and sing along. So you also have a text box. You can even type here. Um, here you even have a drawing capability. So those of uh, our lecturers who needs to draw, you can even use this to draw. So you have a lot of uh, drawing drawing tools here. You can draw. And here you even have some uh, workspace symbols. Huh? So here you can use this workspace symbol if you want. Uh, there is silence, there is whisper, there is ask a neighbor, there is work together, okay, and then you even have a traffic light, um, so you have a traffic light of uh, red, green, and yellow, you can even use this uh, following your creativity in the classroom, okay, and you even have a timer, um, here you can set a timer, how much you want, uh, if you don't want all this is cluttering, you can even delete this, huh? just click delete, and then uh, you can even close this very, click X, you can close this. So you can even have a timer here. You can set how many, how long you want uh, the timer, right? And then you even have a stopwatch. Uh, so you can even put a stopwatch and it can also run for you. So you got a timer, you got a stopwatch. And even have a clock. Uh, so the clock is here. See, so very nice. You can really develop a very nice, uh, interesting dashboard, you know, and it makes your classroom uh, really, really nice and really, really interesting. I want to share you an example of a dashboard that I did. Uh, um uh, let me just see where is it so, so hold on uh, let me show you the example of a dashboard uh this is the example of a dashboard that i edited it uh, i edited it and it looks very very interesting and and nice uh, so you can get an idea uh, how to uh use that classroom dashboard uh for your own class okay let me just uh find where is it uh is it this one Mm. What? Ah, here yeah, they go. Ah, this is an example of a uh, my own dashboard, the one that I designed uh, on my own. You see, so this is a project, uh, a grant project that I got from MPPJ. So we train uh, school teachers on how to use online teaching, right? So you can see that this is a design. So I design a nice picture and I upload it, and then all the sponsors logos are there. So there's a clock and then all the school names. So you can see all the school names is already listed here. So you're going to randomly choose each school, which who's going to present and you even have the date and time and you have the title of your program. See, very, very professional and looks very, very nice. Uh, and this is using teams. Uh. Then you can see me here at the bottom right here, struggling to make myself look important. Okay, so you see this is, uh, you can use teams and uh, you can use the classroom screen, uh, the dashboard uh, to help you in your teaching and learning, all right? So you can go and experiment on this. Lah. So let me just round up the workshop for today. Um, so other important things, some consideration for e-learning, um, just take note of the amount of time each student needs to complete the course activity. So when you do an activity, it takes time. Some students are computer savvy, some are not. So some students might take time to complete it. Um, some of the online learning activities can require a lot of independent learning as well. So uh, be careful about that. And sometimes we are pushing students out of their comfort zone. Uh, so you have students who are introvert, extrovert. Uh, not many people are comfortable to talk. Uh, so you can use a balance of activities that doesn't require them to talk uh, so that they slowly come up from their comfort zone and be aware about students' um, ability to use technology may 
wearing. So some of the best practices is you have lots of interactive, collaborative learning. Uh, you yourself is very strong in your own subject uh, matter. Okay, you design the activities in a very interesting way. You provide video lectures and you provide a lot of activities to bridge the gap. Uh, be careful about the assessment. You know, assessment needs to be adapted for e-learning context. And if we can touch both on social, cognitive and teaching, that will be a perfect uh, best practice for e-learning. So this is a website I'm giving you. You might want to take note of this website. Uh, this is the link. Okay. And this website gives you all other applications that you need for quiz and survey. What I've shown you is some of the most popular, but there are got many other applications out there. So this is a website that gives you all the other application. So you want for quiz, you want for discussion, you want for content curation, there's many others. And there are a lot more other applications inside here. So you want to take a look and uh, go and check out this website. As part of the workshop, I'm also giving you some uh, excellence of award-winning uh, blended learning models. So these are all award-winning where they have won awards based on uh, blended learning uh, implemented in the schools and university. So you can slowly go and read them and check them out. And these are some examples of uh, blended learning models in links also as well. So you can go and check them out at your own pastime and get some ideas, get some creativity on how to utilize them for your own classroom. Okay, so I think that's it uh, for me, um, everyone. So thank you for your whole day participation and uh, uh, whole day uh, uh, learning today. I hope that you gain much from this workshop and uh, do keep in touch. And I also like to take this opportunity to thank EDEC, uh, Mr. Anis also for helping to arrange this workshop and inviting me to be a, a speaker for the webinar. Okay, so thank you everyone and over to you, Mr. Anis. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Doni and for yeah for the impactful sharing about the digital hub for educators hope all the participants um, gain some ideas for the future in the class okay kindly ensure that uh, all the participants have filled in the attendance form and feedback from before leaving the session Please note that certificate is only provided to participants who fill out the feedback form. I will share the links in the comment. And yeah, hope see you guys for another webinar. Hey, all right. Again, thank you very much, Dr. Doni. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anis. Thank you, everyone. All the best, yeah? See you yeah. all in future. Workshop, see you. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Thank Dr. you, Dr. Bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Thank you, Bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Donnie.